Part four of the mid-season softball feature, or whatever this turns out to be called. Now we have outfielder Alex Coleman. She scurried in here and sat down. She's going to spend a little bit of time with us. We're going to talk a little bit more about this herd team. We're going to talk about a little bit more about Alex as a player and the trajectory of her career so far and what's going on in the future. So, first of all, Alex, thanks for sitting down with us. Trusting us with a little bit of your time. We're going to have a really good time over the next half hour or so. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> All right. Uh, 2022 started out with, uh, had a pretty good year. 324. You batted 324 with a 702 OPS, 11 hits on the season, three walks, just four stolen bases, though, which was fifth on the team in 2022. Uh, fielding percentage of 0. .929, so really took care of the ball defensively as well. Let's flash forward here to 2023, shall we? Through 34 games, batting average is up over 100 points, now batting 455, 0. .968 OPS. You're just flat out getting on base. 50 total hits on the season so far, 10 walks. All these categories are shooting through the roof, but here's the best one. 35 stolen bases for this team and counting, which puts you number one, obviously, on this Marshall team. But amongst the tops in the NCAA, all through 34 games with, yes, an increase in defensive fielding percentage, too, at .944. Alex, what the hell has gone on between 2022 and 2023? How did every single category shoot through the roof? Well, towards the end of my freshman year, I had – I was injured, had kind of a string of unfortunate injuries. Um, I worked my way through that, and I told myself coming into this year that my only goal was to have fun, enjoy the game. And I think that's really taken me a long ways. Well, I mean, we're that's seeing – That's really just been my goal is having fun with my team. Yeah, we're yeah. seeing a lot in, uh, in 2023 from a statistical category. But like you said, it's about having fun with your team. And uh, there's a lot of personalities – on this squad and it's a lot of them are yeah. kind of sort of the same in a lot of ways, but most of you are very different in some other ways. Uh, but it's just fun to watch, right? You win, which is great. You're, you're fun to watch, which is great. But I say many, many times, basically weekly on the Thundercast, I, I think I identify with your game as a player more than any other, because you do what I love to do, steal bases, run bases, that type of thing. And you're really, really good at it. So um, you talked about a string of injuries in 2022. So when the season ended and you're preparing yourself for 2023, what was your mindset? What were, what were, what were the goals you set for yourself? What did you want to do that you didn't get to do in 22? So Twenty twenty two, like I said, was just kind of a tough year. Freshman year can be kind of tough for everybody for different reasons. Um, I think coming into 2023, like I said, my mindset was just to get healthy. And like I said, like when I was given opportunity, make the most of it and sure. not put so much pressure on yourself. You know, if you go out and go four for four, then you go out and go four for four, four for four. But if you don't, then it's, it's the same game. You know, it's yeah. no pressure. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's always intriguing to me how, how folks approach the game. Yeah. You know, and we're fortunate enough today, Russ and I are fortunate enough today to talk to, I mean, you guys got a lot of high performers on this team, but we're getting four of the highest performers in statistical categories. And we get to talk to how you prepare, you know, what, how you approach the game, you know, what's important to you as a player. And uh, I, I love getting this type of insight. So yeah. what, what makes – I'm, I'm going to I'm going to ask this question and I'm going to I'm going to yield to Russ because I have to know this. I can't get past this. I don't want to I don't want to categorize you as a base stealer only like that's the only arsenal a game or only weapon you have in your arsenal. But what do you see? Because I know what I used to see and I'm not nearly as good as you are, but I know what I used to see. So what do you see? What makes a base stealer a great base stealer? Getting a good job is number one. So how that's do you know what, what, what tells you? to take that jump. That's what I'm saying. What do you see? What's the little intricacy that you see? When do you know when to go? What, when is too soon? When is too late? Like, I mean, I've been doing it a long time and I feel like early in the year, I got caught out a couple of times for leaving early and that had never happened before, but you have to know to push the envelope. Uh, you don't want to get thrown out at second base knowing you got a bad jump. 
Sure. That's my thing. Like, okay. I think I'm getting a good jump. I'm going to push the envelope. I mean, you can have a you can have a lot of speed and be a bad base stealer. I've seen a lot mm -hmm. of girls who are faster than me who aren't good at stealing bases. Right. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying, right? So what makes a you're bad if you're if you're fast but bad at stealing bases, that doesn't equate. You would think, well, it's a linear thing. You go, all right, I'm fast, I can steal bases. But there's more than that. You have to know, you have to have the instinct. That's what yeah. I'm saying. So if you don't have the instinct, just leave it on the shelf. You know, leave it for those that got right. it. You got it. That's what I'm getting at. You got the instinct. And that's what it's always intriguing to me because I was good at that and I'm not good at much, but I was good at that. And uh that's why I like I, I like seeing oh, Alex is on first. She could be on third in two pitches. That's the that's the fear that yeah. I, I like to put in a pitcher's heart. Are, are you the same way? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. And being on the same page as the girl hitting behind you, so okay. we know what's going on. She knows if I'm running most of the time, and we're on the same page. Yeah. And there's nothing better than than putting a bunt down three feet from the plate and then it being a double in a couple pitches. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're speaking my language. <laughs> you are speaking my yeah, language. There's nothing better than that. It's like you spent my whole career playing ball, and never hit a ball out of the park. Never, me, ever. So you no, know, it was always small. Oh, see, see, it's like same player, except you're way better. Uh, and Russ, a, and what do you? Got? <laughs> am I thinking correctly? But this was uh, two Saturdays ago, Saturday before last at the dot. Uh, Southern Miss, did you lead off the game at the triple and they called you out for going out of the batter's box uh, before hitting yeah. the ball? All right, so yeah, I was frustrated at that. I also didn't realize that that was a thing that you couldn't have a foot outside of the, the box or whatever, and I understand why. They don't want people drag bunting and they're already halfway down the line when they make contact, but um you are one of those players that with your speed and with that bunting and with the swinging bunt and all that, you are already moving toward first. How much does that get in your head that you have to stop at a certain point or don't go any further so you're not going to get called out? Well, when I get called out of the box, it's when most lappers get called out of the box, it's their foot over home plate, not towards first base. Oh, okay. So, it's your left, yeah, it's your left foot, it's your crossover foot. So they're trying to keep you from going out over the plate. Um, it's not really towards first base. Like we work in practice, even running towards the shortstop when we hit the ball. And that's to keep us from peeling away because your mindset is on the ball, on the pitch until you hit the ball, see contact, and then you run. So when we get called out, it's typically over the plate, whether it's sometimes reaching for an outside pitch, leaning over, not keeping good posture is when that happens. Gotcha. That makes, that makes perfect sense. I just, I, obviously I didn't play softball, uh, growing up. I played, uh, uh, what I would c call beer league softball as an adult and they did not care where you put your foot when you did that. So, uh, right. yeah. So learning new things here. Take me through the process, Alex. We're getting ready to start a weekend series. It doesn't matter if we're on the, at home or on the road. How do you, uh, how do you prepare yourself? for that to lock in for that first game of the series or the second or the, the finale, what's your process? How do you get prepared? Um, one day at practice during the week, we, um, we set up a pitch machine and go outside with just the slappers and see um, placement and stuff like that off a machine. And that's one of my main things is seeing the pitch from the distance at practice, especially being a slapper with time. And it's not all, front toss and mechanics. It's, I like seeing it from the distance from the pitch machine and placement on the field is much better than hitting in the cage for me personally. Um, also, just leading up to it, I try to stay relaxed, kind of have a routine and, you know, you got to keep it lighthearted. That's been one of my main focuses this year. It's not making it more than it is. It's, it's a game. It's, well, that's true. It is, it is a game and I'm glad, you know, it kind of makes me feel good that for all of the success that you've been, been seeing, right, as a team early in this season, right. that it still never starts to weigh on you and there's this extra added pressure of, like, we've got to continue to outdo ourselves every weekend because that's mm -hmm. often detrimental, right? So to say it's just a game, uh, some folks might think that, well, listen how nonchalant she's being. I listen to that and I think that's the mindset I want, right? I, I want you to think it's just a game. 
you know, win or loss, it's not going to change right. who I am. It's not going to change who this team is. So what we lost one, it's not a big deal. Um, so I heard you say you follow a routine. It, it, not that you have a written list, but is there a, is it's like, all right, I got to listen to my right music. I got to make sure I put my left sock on before my right sock. Is it, are you like, um, what is the word? Rich, is it rich? Would you call it ritualistic, Russ? Do you do things the same way every time, no matter what? Is that you? I'm kind of, I kind of have some things I like to do and it really starts the morning of, um, a lot of times I go and sit by the river, uh, the Ohio river and like sit there and listen to music. Like sometimes I'll do a sermon or something like that, get my mind right. And then when I get here, I have my earbuds and we're playing music in the locker room and stuff, but I have my music coming yeah. through my earbuds. I'm kind of a, a music junkie, if you could say, and I'll, I don't really like a lot of mainstream stuff people listen to now, but um, uh, yeah, I listen to my stuff and I have a um, fun fact, my travel ball team, we were given like Jesus cards. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what we call them, like every day of a tournament. So I have a big stack of them I keep in my bat bag and I play with like a different one in my back pocket every game. It's like I rotate through them. So that's one of my things. Like I have to have my card in my back pocket, but that's 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 I've never and uh, I mean, I haven't been doing this forever, but out of all the people I've talked to in the course of my life, you're the first one that says I go sit by the river and kind of get at peace. Basically, yeah. that's cool, yeah. man. Yeah, that is cool. super cool. Yeah. Um, I have never heard that before anywhere. Not even like professionally. Nobody interview I've ever heard of is anybody like I just like to go sit by the water and just. <laughs> that is great yeah, to me, it's man. Like, it's like my day. Yeah. Unless so we have, cool. if we have to be here at seven, if we're here early, then sometimes I'll just. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but most yeah. of the time it does. If it can yeah. happen, it happens. That's really cool. Now yeah. you're going to have to excuse yeah. me for not knowing this, but where are you from? <laughs> where do you think I'm from? I don't know. Ashboro, North Carolina. <laughs> Yeah, I'm from North Carolina. So it had to be somewhere in the country because not not everybody just goes and wants to chill <laughs> by the river. And I mean, that's cool, man. That's yeah. really cool. I, I I think you might have more West Virginia blood in you than you realize if you're if you're doing that kind of stuff to prep for a game. Yeah. That's really neat, man. I don't know West Virginia. West Virginia ain't the south. I'm telling you that. Well, we could have a whole separate conversation about that, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are we the northernmost southern state or the southernmost northern state? That's that's the quintessential it's argument. It's just, it's oh, just yeah, it's different. different. It's just different. It's different. Yeah, it's All right, different. So, so there are a lot of personalities on this team and everything, but who is the funniest, who cuts up the most? Uh, I, I just have to know. Okay, that's a really hard question. It's hard to say just one. Like, everybody okay. is so... Give me three, then. <laughs> Give me the 17 most. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Big has, like, a very dry, I think, like, sense of humor. Me and her get each other. Like, she cracks me up a lot. Um, God, three? Cam is, like, a firecracker all the time. I'm sure you all see that. She really, she gets us going. We have a lot of fun together. <laughs> I really can't like name. That's fine. You don't have good sense. Yeah, yeah. We're not trying to put you on the spot, but yeah. generally people like, have no, the. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, if, if you can't name three, just turn your mic off and get out of here. Uh, Eric, Eric, Eric is, <laughs> no, I, I'll tell you what. Eric is just a nut too. Like we just love being around her too. She always has something funny to say. <laughs> Let's. Um, let me ask you a question. You should know the answer to. Then you shouldn't have to. Well, it's probably equally hard. Who Who is the most clutch player that you have on this team right now the one that always comes grace. through seemingly what grace grace man yeah. and and what 100 what makes you say that well she's in a tough situation though hitting behind autumn can be it takes a certain kind of person to, to want to be in that position because they're going to put her on base a lot right now yeah and you have to want to be in that position you have to want the game to be in your hands to an extent. If if you come through, you come through great. But if you don't, you know that it was in your hands and you have to believe that that's the best hands it can be in. I mean, and she came through last weekend where we 
Georgia State. Yeah, she mm -hmm. came through big against Georgia State, and they got Autumn for the second time and pitched to Grace. I mean, kind of has a chip on your shoulder. And last year, she walked us off against Charlotte after they pitched around someone in front of her. It's it's a it's a big situation to be in. Well, I mean, I think that's kind of what you want, right? I, I even if okay. I even if I am not one hundred percent confident in my ability to come through all the time. I still think I want to take my shots. You know, I, I want to be the the one that gets a crack at it. And she's in a, she's making the most of it, really. Uh, I, I like what you're yeah. saying about uh, being in a tough spot. It is a tough spot. You know, hitting behind the nation's home run leader, current home run leader, you know you're going to get your opportunities because folks are going to want to try yeah, it's a great to – spot, though. Yeah, yeah, it is a great spot. Yeah. So that's mm – -hmm. that's, Grace seems to be cleaning, sweeping this category right now. Everybody seems to think Grace is the most clutch player on this team. So um, let me ask you another question, and then I'll, I'll yield to Russ for another one. We talk about Dot Magic a lot, right? This team does. We do. What does that mean to you? It's just it's something special, man. I mean, we love playing at home. We love our fans. I think our fans is one of our – I mean, we play for them, like – for example, the other day after the game, a little boy comes up to me wanting his picture because his first name's Colton. Like that is something that that's something bigger than me. That's not magic. We have little girls, little boys here wanting to come watch us play and just being at home, being with these fans, with this crowd, it's something special. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I hear that a lot from uh, your coaches and now now some of you guys. You're talking about the fan support that you get here. That's not everywhere uh that, that that other schools don't have everywhere and it's really cool man I, and, I, and i'm not trying to say that you're wrong but dot magic also travels because we've you, you talked about it just a minute ago grace walks you off against charlotte last year in uh, where was that denton texas wasn't that where the tournament was or something like that it was not in yeah, huntington we, I know she that. walked us off here too oh yeah she walked us off here too and, uh, oh wait maybe i'm thinking about who, hit, who, who, who walked it was it uh maybe maya walked it hit the hit the uh home run to end one of those yeah. conference usa tournament games but that's that's dot magic that's yeah. that chat that that stuff yeah. travels yeah it travels with you hell yeah it does it's a cool, all right it's a cool we spot. we we talked about uh with the uh, the other ladies that were on uh being locked in and so focused and so serious before a game but you guys also do the dancing you do the uh uh handshake circle with Corey and all this cool stuff how important is it for you that you guys have fun while you are kicking ass on the on the field? I think for me, it's you can get worked up and tense and nervous and have butterflies and stuff before the game. And like when we do our handshake line, and I think the other girls feel this way too. And when we do the dance or whatever, it's it helps you just relax like for a few seconds before the game starts. I was told to ask you about Joey. Who is who is Joey? <laughs> She's my dog. Well, I'm going to need a little bit more than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. She's our family dog. My brother named her when we were young. And my mom was like, well, Cam, you know that this is a girl dog. And he said, yeah, well, we can still name her Joey. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> what type of dog? I mean, my name's, my name's Alex. I have a unisex name, so I don't, I don't what, see anything wrong with it. <laughs> what type of dog is Joey? A mix between a beagle and a King Charles Cavalier. Well, that was, I, I, I knew the first one. I didn't know the <laughs> second one. <laughs> I hadn't she's heard a, the... She's kind of a... She's like a prissy beagle. She's kind of a, <laughs> a prissy right. dog. Look, let me give you let me give you one more, and then uh, I got some quick hit questions for you, and then we'll get you your day back. Okay. Um, right. what is what is it that's special about this particular herd softball team, this twenty twenty three team, and uh, what's the goal for the rest of the year? There's so many special things about this team. I mean, our coaches are great. Um, they're so amazing. I I love them to death. Coach Smith does a really great job leading us, and um, we play for each other. I mean, I want every person to succeed like it's me hitting, and that's a special thing, and we have each other's back. We play for each other. I want 
whoever to walk it off just as bad as I want to walk off. Sure. And it's, it's, you can't, you can't teach that. You can't teach what we have right now. Yeah. So what, what's, and what's for the rest of the year? Yeah. Um, I say, I mean, you take it one game at a time. That's what I try to do. Take it one game at a time. Don't look too far ahead. I mean, win every game, win every game you can and approach each game like it's the last. That's what one of the main things Coach Smith tells us is this game we're about to play is the most important game of the year. Every midweek non-conference game we play is the most important game of the year. and We approach every single game like that. And I mean, yeah, of course we want to win. Of course we want to win conference. Everybody does. But I think we do that, you know, by just keep focusing on the game in front of us. I think it's an excellent approach. You know, we hear a lot about in other sports, particularly, you know, you hear it's a one game season, right? It's a one game season, Mm -hmm. but you guys have a lot, you have 50 one game seasons. So it's, you, you can see how it begins to get hard to keep that focus, even though you know, that's the focus you need to maintain and the leadership that you have coach Smith, Corey, Maddie, they're doing a great job and you guys are doing a great job of keeping yourselves accountable, keeping yourselves focused and, and staying like on task. It's just great. I mean, you don't, you don't run through the first 34 by accident, you know, and, and post the record that you've posted. Uh It has to be deliberate and you can tell that the results are, are it's the direct result of a deliberate approach to the game. And I think it's freaking awesome because uh, well, we've never seen it before. So we're hoping to see, obviously, more and more. We don't rest on wins and losses. Let me say that. Like, it, 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 it's not what it's about for us, okay? We all know that it's a little bit bigger than that, but I, th- I just think it's very rewarding from a fan standpoint to see you guys get rewarded in a win and loss, you know, like this lopsided win-loss record for all the work and all the focus and all that kind of stuff. That's what's cool to me. Um, what we like to do to close out these segments is we quiet down, and uh, we give you just an open mic to say whatever you want to say to whoever you want to say it to. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And then let me ask you four quick questions, and we'll get you the heck out of here. So floor is yours. Just playing for the 75 and being at a special place like Marshall, it's, you can't teach it. You can't find it anywhere else. I think we just need to keep focusing on one game at a time, um, having fun with each other. You just got to have fun with it. I mean, why are you doing it if it ain't fun? That's mm-hmm. – that's my thing. You gotta, you gotta enjoy what you do. I mean, keep having fun. Winning's fun. <laughs> keep winning, and you know, focus on the process. That's one of our main things: is focusing on the process. And when we dominate our process, we win. So, well said. And I want you to know that uh, you gave me the best line of this whole interview just now when you said, "Why are you doing it if it ain't fun?" Yeah. I think I think that sums it up perfectly. And uh, you probably just titled your own segment with that line. I think that's awesome. 